In this tutorial, we'll be using Corel Painter to create a fractal abstract marble type effect like you see here. That's coming up next. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and it is my mission to help you enjoy digital art and learn some new skills along the way. We're going to be creating this marble effect using Corel Painter particle brushes. And the reason why I'm creating this video is because I got a question from one of my viewers, Roseanne. And she sent me this image and was wondering if there's a way to create something like this, like you see here in the reference palette, in Corel Painter. She created this using a fractal generator application. So I'm always up for a challenge. Let's see if we can do it here in Corel Painter. So first, I'm starting with a square canvas here. I chose a size of 1920 by 1920 pixels, but you could use any size canvas you want. Since we're going to be working with particle brushes, you don't want to make your canvas too big, otherwise the brushes will perform slowly. Let's go ahead and select a black, and let's just fill our canvas with black. And then let's define that spherical shape for our marble. So we want to look under the shape tools for the oval tool or the ellipse tool. Up here in the top in the properties bar, we have an option for a stroke and a fill. I want to make sure that fill is turned on and we can choose a dark gray color like this. Now, if I tap and hold and then I hold down shift while I'm dragging, then I can create a perfect circle. I'll release my pen and shift at the same time. Then I'll select the move tool or the black arrow tool. and I'll just center my marble and we have this nice, perfect circle. Let's go ahead and just name this layer circle and then let's choose select layer content and let's hide the selection while keeping it active Then we'll reduce the opacity of that layer until we can just barely see it. Next, we'll create a new layer above that. We'll just go ahead and call this yellow and I'm going to create different layers for my different colors. Now the brush that we're going to want to use is glow gravity brush. This is found in my particles glow effects category. And because this is a glow brush, we typically want to choose colors that are a bit darker than the color that we're going to get so that that color doesn't build up too quickly to white. So let's try kind of a dark yellow like this and we'll make a mark. I think that's about the kind of look that we want. So I'll just do an undo. Now if I make my brush too big, I'm going to get something that looks like this. That's not the effect that we want. So we want to keep our brush relatively small, but the size of your brush is really going to affect the kind of results that you get. So don't make it too big. Let's go ahead and just put in some stuff here. Just some little swirls that go through here. Now, because we have select layer content on this layer, we're not able to paint outside of this selection. So everything will be nice and trapped inside of here. I'm not going to try to copy the reference image exactly. I'll just try to get it kind of close. If you're more quick about your movements, then your particles spread out a bit more. And if you're slower, then they kind of stay together. Let's go ahead and do another layer now. We'll call this blue. And let's select a bluish color, still keeping it pretty dark. Now you may notice that the blue is kind of covering up the yellow and it's not really blending together in a way that I like. So I could try either moving the blue beneath the yellow, which I think I like that better, or I can keep the blue on top and I can change the composite method of that layer to screen and then they kind of blend together. I think I kind of liked it the way it was, so I'll put the blue beneath the yellow. Let's go ahead and do a layer on top call this orange and I'll select an orange color now. Do some of this right along the edges. And I'm trying to keep these gestures more or less kind of spherical. Now if I build up the paint on itself, it's going to get a lot lighter and it's going to build up to white. So I can paint over and over again on some of the same places. I'm going to switch to red and I'll create a new layer for red. We'll just build up a little bit of red here. And let's create one more new layer and we'll call this green and we'll take this greenish blue color here and we'll put some of that in. Maybe that was a bit too light, so I'm going to make it a little bit darker. And just build it up on itself here. And we want to highlight here, so let's create a new layer for that and we'll call this white. I don't want it to be perfectly white. I want it to have a little bit of color near the edges. So let's go ahead and choose a slightly lighter yellow like this. And up here we're going to have a highlight Then maybe down here and over here. Now, once you're pretty happy with some of the stuff that you put in your marble shape here, you can go ahead and save a copy of your work by going to Save As. I'll just call this Marble 1, and I'm going to save this as a Painter Riff. Then I'm going to go to Save As again, and I'm going to call this Marble 2. That way I have two versions. One I'm going to use to keep my layers, and the other one I'm going to merge my layers down. So I want to merge all of these color layers by selecting them holding Shift, and then hit Control-E on your keyboard to merge them. I'll just call this New Merged Layer Colors. And now let's go ahead and select the Bulge Distortion Brush. We want to make our brush as big as we can, preferably about the size of the marble. Believe it or not, coincidentally, my maximum brush size is just about exactly the size of the circle I made. 
didn't intend for it to be that way, but what do you know? It's magic. So we want to basically just paint in the center here to bulge it out like this. That creates that nice compressed edge, and we get that nice bulged marble effect. Now, where you bulge it out, it is going to start to look a little blurry and a little blocky. So you may want to then go over it again with some more layers just to sharpen it up a bit. So let's create a new layer. Let's go back to our Glow Gravity brush. Choose some of those same colors we were using before. And just put some more of that detail back in. And again, if you want to set the composite method to screen, that might help it blend in better. Create another layer. I'm not going to worry about naming these layers because I know they're going to be more or less temporary. Put in some of this stuff. Maybe another layer for some red. And another layer for a highlight. That's starting to look pretty good so far. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer that is above the circle but underneath the colors. I'm just going to call this BG for background. We'll keep using that glow gravity brush. Now we're going to choose some colors that are a bit darker that don't stand out quite as much and a little brush. I'll just go through back here and put in some little lines. Make it a bit brighter so it shows up more. We want to try to fill in some of that negative space with a little bit of detail. We'll do that blue. That way it's nice and filled in. We'll do a little bit more yellow. Let's do a layer above the color now. We won't worry about naming this. We'll just go ahead and put some stuff in here. But again, using a very small brush, light pressure, building up these little details. They might show up a bit better if we set the composite method to screen. Let's create another layer above all the other layers. Let's set it to screen. And again, just drawing in more of these little wispy details here. Let's do some red as well. Now let's go ahead and just flatten all of our color layers here. And again, we'll select that bulge brush. And we'll just bulge it out from the center. Go ahead and create one more layer and we'll add a bit more detail here. Let's go ahead and flatten down our color layers again and we'll bulge it one more time. And I think that's looking pretty good. Now if you want to, this is kind of optional, you can take that circle layer, move it above everything else. We can increase the opacity. And we want to change the color of that layer, we'll double click next to it. Since it's a vector layer, we can change the color by clicking on color. Let's choose black, we'll click on OK. Change the composite method to screen, and that makes the black disappear. We'll right click on the circle, convert it to a default layer, turn on preserve transparency, and we can use the airbrush and white, and we can paint in a bit of a highlight here, maybe a little bit over on this side too, and we'll select the distortion brush. Use a pretty big brush just to push some of that highlight, just to help it look a bit sharper. Can reduce the opacity till you find a blend that you like, but that helps it look a little more shiny. Let's create one more layer. Turn off preserve transparency. We'll use the airbrush with that same white color. We can just make some of this white area glow here. Let's go ahead and save our progress by going to save as. Let's go ahead and merge our marble layers down with control E. We'll deselect our active selection and we'll use the blur blender to blend along the edges. And that helps the edges look like they're moving away in three dimensional space. But keep the center pretty sharp. So there you go, that's how you can create a marble effect using the particle brushes in Corel Painter. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you'd like to learn more about how to paint with Corel Painter particle brushes, check out some of my video training courses at AaronRutten.com. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.